Tonight, chaos in Louisville. Protesters and police clashing for hours. Anger on the streets reignited. All of this after news that one officer would be charged, but not for actions that directly led to the death of Breonna Taylor. The criminal law is not meant uh, to respond uh, to every sorrow and grief. Uh, and that is, that is true here. Kentucky's Attorney General announced Detective Brett Hankison was being charged with wanton endangerment. He fired 10 shots that night, none of which hit Taylor. In March, just after midnight, police were serving a drug warrant at Taylor's apartment. They broke down the door. Taylor's boyfriend said he thought they were intruders and opened fire. Sergeant Jonathan Mattingly and Detective Miles Cosgrove fired back. Taylor was struck six times and died. The state attorney general says the officer's use of force in response was justified. Justice is not often easy, it does not fit the mold of public opinion, and it does not conform to shifting standards. One major question, did police properly identify themselves? Cameron said they did, confirmed by one witness, even though multiple other witnesses have said otherwise. Reaction to the decision was swift and raw. It feels like today, and I think it's a fact, that black lives do not matter. All the cops should have been arrested. Experts say this shows why police reform must include the grand jury process. It's a deeply politicized process, and it's one where there's not just a finger, there's a foot on the side of the scale uh, of police officers. Tonight, as police try to clear the Louisville streets after a 9 p.m. curfew, other protests have sprung up in cities across the country. Protesters say the fight for justice is far from over, and Breonna Taylor's name will continue to be a rallying cry. Stephen D'Souza, CBC News, New York. Breonna Taylor's life mattered! Say her name! Breonna Taylor! Say her name! From the nation's capital to New York, and to Breonna Taylor's hometown of Louisville. Thousands of Americans have gathered to express their outrage. That a Kentucky grand jury decided that no police officer would be charged with the 26-year-old's death. One officer was charged with wanton endangerment for recklessly firing rounds into a neighbor's apartment. In the aftermath of charges being dropped, two police officers were shot a suspect is in custody, and the officers are expected to make a recovery. But the many protests in American cities were largely peaceful, with Americans of all races and creeds coming out to support the Black Lives Matter movement, for which Taylor's name has become a rallying cry. I want black people to feel safe anywhere that they go. We shouldn't have to worry about, is this, are we safe? Will it be, a, will we, who will be next? It's heartbreaking because this, I, we can't keep getting murdered on the street. I'm mixed and I have a lot of black friends. I have any color friends. So if this can keep happening and they don't stand for it, when will it ever stop? I'm here because I think it's, you know, it's not right to have you know, killed her and have no repercussions for killing an innocent woman. Breonna Taylor was an emergency room technician. She was asleep when officers raided her apartment last March. Her boyfriend says he thought there was an intruder and fired his gun. Police responded with a barrage of gunfire. Taylor's death, police violence against African Americans, and a justice system that many feel turns a blind eye to countless abuses of force have created a call for change, one that continues to be echoed across the United States. I know that many in Louisville and across the Commonwealth and country have been anxiously awaiting the completion of our investigation to the death of Miss Brianna Taylor. The above named defendant, Brett Hankison, committed the offense of wanton endangerment in the first degree. After hearing the evidence from our team of prosecutors, the grand jury voted to return an indictment against Detective Hankinson for three counts of wanton endangerment for wantonly placing the three individuals in apartment three in danger of serious physical injury or death. The charge of wanton endangerment in the first degree is a class D felony. And if found guilty, the accused can serve up to five years for each count.
The use of force by Mattingly and Cosgrove was justified to protect themselves. This justification bars us from pursuing criminal charges in Miss Brianna Taylor's death. As a attorney general who is responsible for all uh, 120 counties in terms of being the chief law, legal officer, the chief uh, law enforcement officer, I understand that. I understand that as a black man, how painful this is. And um, which is why it was so incredibly important for make sure that we did everything we possibly could to uncover every fact. Uh, obviously, again, the criminal law is not meant uh, to respond uh, to every sorrow and grief. Uh, and that is, that is true here. Uh, but my heart breaks uh, for the loss of Ms. Taylor. Evidence shows that officers both knocked and announced their presence at the apartment. The officer's statements about their announcement are corroborated by an independent witness who was near in a proximity to apartment four. In other words, the warrant was not served as a no-knock warrant. Sergeant Mattingly saw the man's gun fire, heard a boom, and immediately knew he was shot as a result of feeling heat in his upper thigh. My job is to present the facts to the grand jury, and the grand jury then applies those facts to the law. If we simply act on emotion or outrage, there is no justice. Mob justice is not justice. Justice sought by violence is not justice. In the announcement, he described um, the investigation. But he talked about information, facts, evidence that neither I nor the general public have seen. I believe that the public deserves this information. A woman black woman was killed in her home by the agency paid for to protect and serve her. That's wrong. There is no justifying that. And it does call on us to change laws, to lift up Brianna's law, but to do so much more in accountability and reimagining public safety in a true sense, which is not simply more and more law enforcement, being called on to be everything, public safety. We have to do that work if we really want to honor Brianna. ...to the charges. I was taking notes, um, so I'm, uh, and I hope, and hopefully you'll be able to correct me if I'm incorrect. Um, count one regarded wanton endangerment um, in the domicile, the home of somebody whose initials are CD. I heard the initial CE. I heard the initial ZF. What I don't think I heard was the initial BT, which is Breonna mm -hmm. Taylor. We should check that and double check that because I don't want to be inaccurate. But what this sounds like, because we do know that the bullets that were wantonly fired, uh, potentially or uh, allegedly by Officer Hankison, entered other apartments so that what he did was to endanger not just the people in the apartment, but people in neighboring apartments. It feels to me like these charges entirely delete the murder, entirely ignore the killing of Breonna Taylor, even if one of those three is about her. Because what they're saying, 
And I, and I think people need to really think about this because we are talking about from a larger policy point of view. And I think Brittany is exactly right. We have to think bigger. What this indictment says of just this one officer leaving the other two officers completely innocent, apparently, right? Officers Cosgrove and Mattingly did nothing wrong, according to this indictment. It means that if you live in the state of Kentucky, if you were ever associated in any way with somebody who was caught in the criminal justice system, even if they are no longer associated with you and no longer live in your home, Police have the full right and are fully within the law to bust into your apartment while you're asleep after midnight and start shooting and can kill you as long as they aim. Say it again. As long as they aim their weapon at you or at anyone in the apartment, they are within the law, according to this indictment, according to AG Daniel Cameron. Police then have the full right to kill you because they are investigating an association that doesn't have anything to do with you committing a crime. You haven't done anything. They're not even accusing you of committing a crime. Apparently, I'm not sure they were sure who was in the apartment. They're just saying that apartment is associated with someone who was associated with you. So sorry if they bust in and they start licking off shots and you get killed. Your death is irrelevant to the law in the state of Kentucky. Your death doesn't matter. Your life doesn't matter. This was a Black Lives Don't Matter ruling because they said that her life was irrelevant, that the life of her boyfriend who was in the apartment with her didn't matter, that he attempting to defend her was the crime. The potential crime was him trying to defend his castle. So the castle doctrine is wiped away when police bust into your home. You don't have the right to defend yourself, don't have the right to survive, you don't have the right to have medical attention applied to you. These officers don't even have to try to save you. They can just shoot you. That is what I heard in this. Now, it didn't surprise me. I will say I have lost the, the, the capacity to be surprised. I'm never surprised anymore. Because here's the problem. The authority who will decide if your life is worth pursuing a case over is the partner of the police, their partner who works with them to make cases, who works with them every day, who knows them by first name, probably sends them Christmas cards, knows who their kids are, their friend, their partner, the prosecutor will decide if your life matters. And guess what? In 99% of those cases, they will say it doesn't. As we mentioned, a grand jury has indicted one officer in relation to the Breonna Taylor case more than six months after she was shot dead by police in her Louisville home. Fired officer Brett Hankinson was indicted on three counts of wanton endangerment. Two other officers who opened fire were not indicted. Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron said Taylor's death was a tragedy, but that the rule of law must apply. Louisville police shot the 26-year-old EMT in March while executing a warrant at her apartment in a narcotics investigation. Taylor's boyfriend fired once at police and says he believed they were intruders. No drugs were ever found at her home. Today, the family's attorney said it was outrageous and offensive that there were no charges related to Taylor's death. Alyssa Mark Haydary joins me now. She's a deputy director at the Institute for Innovation in Prosecution at John Jay College and a former assistant district attorney for New York County. Welcome, Alyssa. Thanks very much for being with us. The charges against fired officer Brett Hankison are not in relation to Breonna Taylor's death, but for shooting into neighboring apartments. What do you think led to this decision from the grand jury? Um, first of all, thank you so much for having me. Um, I think this has been um, a very difficult day for communities across the country. You know, it's really hard to speculate as to what led to that without being in the grand jury, which are secret proceedings. Thankfully, the attorney general of Kentucky came out and gave us a fair amount of information. Um, and it sounds like what led to that specific indictment is that the officer, Detective Hankinson, in fact, fired bullets not into Ms. Taylor's apartment, but into the apartment neighboring hers. And so it appears that that is what led to the grand jury's decision. 
Do you think this decision overall is one that might merit federal oversight? Yeah, I think that's something uh, for the federal prosecutors to decide. They have a completely different set of laws to look at in terms of civil rights violations. I think what's really important here for people to remember and lessons to take away is that prosecutors in particular really need to be independent um, of, you know, those who are investigating need to not have any relations with uh, police officers who are involved in a case like this and transparency. And so I think it was helpful that the attorney general, to the extent he could, give information as to what the findings were, uh, what evidence the grand jury may have considered, and what the final outcome was. So what does that mean? What happens next with the officers who were not charged? Well, I think, you know, there's still a federal investigation going on, so we don't know what's going to happen there. Um, there was a civil suit, which, uh, as we all know now, has been settled by the city between, you know, the city and Ms. Taylor's family. Uh, there may be disciplinary um, charges coming. So there's still um, some information left to be decided, but it does appear that in terms of criminal charges for those two officers in the state of Kentucky, that is not going to be going forward against those two officers. I know this might be tough to answer, but based on the facts of the case that have been made public, do you believe justice was served? I think that, again, you know, we don't have all the information that the grand jury had. I think the way to um, increase legitimacy of law enforcement, and uh, this is something that we really emphasize here at the Institute for Innovation and Prosecution, is, again, independence and transparency. You are not going to have a public that feels as though law enforcement has been held accountable unless you have investigators who are independent, who have nothing to do with the officers involved, unless the public is informed, not just what the charges are, but why. Um, for instance, in this case, we learned that the two of the officers are not being charged because they were apparently acting in self-defense or there was some evidence to that fact. And so what's important is the public is informed at the end of this investigation in a timely manner what the results were and why. And so I think with that, uh, we'll have a greater sense that justin, justice has been served, not just in this case, but in any case across the country. All right, Alyssa Heyderi. Alyssa, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. So for 26 years, Brianna Taylor lived her life to the fullest. But then on a random night out of nowhere, the Louisville Police Department turned her into a statistic. On March 13th, as Brianna and her boyfriend, Kenny Walker, lay asleep in their bed, plainclothes police officers broke down their door using a battering ram on a no-knock drug warrant. Kenny, thinking intruders were violently breaking in, grabbed his licensed gun. Walker says they didn't say they were the police before he fired off a shot from a gun. The officers responded with a hail of gunfire. When the door comes off the hinges, it's just... It's happening fast, like it was like an explosion. Walker said he purposely aimed his gun towards the ground. Sergeant John Mattingly was struck in the leg and was one of three officers who returned fire. Detective Brett Hankison was standing outside and fired 10 rounds through a closed and curtained patio door. According to Louisville's police chief, his blind shooting displayed an extreme indifference to the value of human life the gunshots whizzed through walls, windows, bullet holes were found everywhere, in the kitchen, bedrooms, in a neighbor's apartment with small children nearby. Multiple neighbors called 911 asking for police, only finding out later it was the police. You know, almost every time we hear a story involving a police shooting, I'm always shocked at how badly trained and not in control the police seem. Brianna Taylor's boyfriend was lying in bed heard his door get smashed in, grabbed his legal firearm, and had the presence of mind to try and injure the intruder by aiming down. But the cops, who are supposed to be trained professionals, they burst in like they get paid by the bullets. And for anyone who has the audacity to blame Brianna's boyfriend for shooting at the cops, please answer me this question. If America tells people to get a gun to defend themselves from intruders, but the cops are the intruders breaking down the door without knocking, what are you supposed to do? To an innocent person, there is zero difference between a no-knock raid and a home invasion. If someone busts down your door in the middle of the night, you're gonna think that they're intruders, not, oh, the cops might be here, or damn, Uber Eats is coming in hot tonight. In fact, it would be weird if you didn't use your gun in that situation. I mean, if not then, what are you saving it for? 
To be honest, we shouldn't even be calling these things no-knock raids. That gives them too much credit. We should just drop the euphemism and call it what it is, a home invasion where police get to act like they're in a video game. The police break down the door without warning. They shoot Breonna Taylor eight times in her own house. And what makes the story even more tragic is that the cops should never have even been in that house in the first place. Police got five warrants approved. Four were for suspected drug dealers and suspected drug houses. Lumped into that with similar language was the warrant for Breonna Taylor's apartment. Under the suspicion, she was involved with handling money and drugs for an alleged Louisville drug dealer, her ex-boyfriend, Jamarcus Glover. She hadn't dated Glover in months. A package police say they saw Glover picking up at Taylor's apartment was likely a pair of shoes, according to the family attorney. And despite what officers were told before the raid, Brianna Taylor certainly did not live alone. When it was all over, police found no drugs, no money in her apartment. Before going into Brianna Taylor's home, police were actually warned that she would be very little threat, if no threat at all. Yes, they used bogus intel, and they came in guns blazing, even though they knew she wasn't a threat. Every step of the way this investigation ran, the police screwed up. They made a million mistakes, which is a million more than any black person is ever allowed to make. And honestly, with the amount of mistakes that the police made throughout the entire process, I don't even know if it's fair to call them mistakes at this point, because a mistake is something you do by accident. But these cops blatantly ignored so many protocols and so much information. At some point, it moves from a mistake to just actively not giving a f And it's bad enough when you learn what these people did in the heat of the moment. But in a way, what's even worse is what they did when they had the time to think. Brianna Taylor was alive for several minutes after police shot her five times. And for more than 20 minutes after Taylor was fatally shot, Taylor 26 lay where she fell in her hallway, receiving no medical attention, according to dispatch logs. You see her boyfriend after the shooting being arrested here in the parking lot. Police tried to charge him with attempting to kill police officers, but those charges were later dropped. A recently released police incident report from that night is mostly blank. It claims there was no forced entry. It does list Taylor as a victim of a crime. And under injuries, it says none even though Taylor was shot eight times. You see, it's one thing to quote unquote, shoot someone accidentally eight times, but leaving her on the floor without any medical attention, that isn't an accident. That's just a blatant disregard for black life. And on top of all of that, the cops submitted a mostly blank incident report, really? You really couldn't think of anything that you could write on that report? Not even, oh, we fucked up? March 13th. Around 12.40 in the morning, Louisville Metro Police entered Brianna Taylor's apartment. Officers had a no-knock search warrant, though they say they announced themselves. Officers then say they were shot at and they shot back. Taylor was shot multiple times and was killed. Her boyfriend, Kenneth Walker, was charged with attempted murder for shooting at police. March 16th, her family speaks out for the first time. This is not a woman who would sacrifice her life and her family um, morals and values to sell drugs on the street. The family says Walker shot at officers in self-defense and that they were looking for someone who didn't live at Brianna's apartment. March 26th, Kenneth Walker was released from jail and put under house arrest. May 11th, the next big update comes. We learned Brianna Taylor's family had hired Benjamin Crump, a high profile civil rights attorney. This is when we started seeing Taylor's case get national attention. We also learned more about the shooting from Brianna Taylor's family. The news organization TMX shared this interview with us then. I could hear Kenny just like screaming and crying. They were shooting from outside the house like this was the wild, wild west. May 13th, the no-knock search warrant and affidavits in connection with Taylor's death were released. A couple things we learned from that. Taylor wasn't the main subject of the warrant. One of the main suspects had been charged the same morning Taylor was killed, and police said they announced themselves and knocked at the apartment. Taylor's attorney said that witnesses could prove that wasn't true. LMPD's then Chief Conrad said the investigation was almost finished. May 21st, FBI Louisville announced they opened an investigation into Taylor's death. Chief Conrad also announced he would retire at the end of June. 
May 26th, a judge dismissed charges against Kenneth Walker. The Commonwealth's attorney asked for it because he believed they needed to investigate more. May 28th, we finally get to hear Kenneth Walker's call to 911 from the night of Brianna's death. Help! Oh my God! Yes, help! I don't, I don't know what's happening. Somebody kicked in the door and shot my girlfriend. That same night, protests started in downtown Louisville. They're blocked. Uh, we hear loud pops, pops. Things got violent. Protests have continued every night since then. June 1st, another flashpoint. Restaurant owner David McAtee is shot and killed by a National Guardsman as law enforcement try to enforce curfew. Officials say McAtee shot first. We learned that two LMPD officers involved in the shooting didn't have their body cams on. And hours later, Mayor Greg Fisher fired Chief Steve Conrad. June 11th, Brianna's law is signed, banning no-knock warrants in Louisville. It was passed unanimously by Metro Council. On June 19th, LMPD and the mayor announced one of three officers in the case would be fired. According to his termination letter, Brett Hankison violated procedure when he fired 10 rounds into Taylor's apartment as they were executing a search warrant the night of her death. The FBI returned to Breonna Taylor's apartment that same day as part of their investigation. Five days later, on June 24th, Hankison appealed his firing. June 27th, gunshots in Jefferson Square. A man opens fire in the protests, shooting two people. One of them, Louisville photographer Tyler Girth, died. Police cleared out Jefferson Square that next morning, banning overnight protests and removing tents and items with little warning. Girth's father spoke to protesters later that day. My wife warned him not to come down because he, you know, yesterday in particular, because he thought it would be dangerous. But he said, no, I, I just need, I feel the need to go down and support, you know, the injustices and, and what's going on. And I want to document that. The suspect, 23-year-old Stephen Lopez, was arraigned in court on June 30th and charged with Girth's death. Witnesses said Lopez was a regular at the park and had caused problems before. He reportedly had an argument with someone, not Girth, on June 27th. When he returned to the square, police say video surveillance shows him grabbing a gun from another protester and then firing into the crowd. A look at Lopez's record reveals previous run-ins with police. As for Girth's family, his sisters say they hope his legacy lives on through the photos he captured. There have been a number of striking photos that he was able to capture that really touched the historical importance of what we're going through right now. And I think he wanted to be on the right side of history. She had a plan for her life and she literally was living it and, and doing just that. And to have it taken away from her is, is unreal. This should never happen again to anyone. No one should ever have to experience that. This is Vice News Tonight Remote. I'm Krishna Undavolu. That was Louisville, Kentucky, where outrage over the killing of Breonna Taylor and the ubiquity of no-knock warrants ignited protests against police violence weeks before George Floyd was killed. This is an extraordinary moment where the devastation racism causes to black families and black communities isn't something people want to stand by and watch anymore. Vice Media is launching something we're calling the 846 Project. That cop pressed his knee to George Floyd's neck for 8 minutes and 46 seconds. But to end the institutional racism that enabled that horrific act, it's going to take a lot longer. We're bringing together all of the arms of the Vice Media Group to do as much as we can to try to deepen our understanding of this American uprising. Simply put, this is a what side are you on kind of moment. And we're going to need your help, your voices, your commitment. For tonight, we're going to dedicate the whole show to the story of Breonna Taylor and the city of Louisville. Go on and do 
Brianna Taylor was a 26-year-old EMT who was fatally shot in her home during a drug raid in March. Police were executing a no-knock search warrant, which is exactly what it sounds like. Permission to forcefully enter someone's home without announcing yourself. In this case, the officer said they did anyway. But Taylor's boyfriend, Kenneth Walker, says that isn't true. And he placed a panicked phone call to 911. 911, Operator Harris, where is your emergency? I don't, I don't know what happened. Did somebody kick in the door inside my girlfriend? Where was she shot at? I don't know. She's on the grill right now. I don't know. Walker says he thought their home was being broken into and fired his gun in self-defense, hitting one of the officers in the leg. The police responded with more than 20 bullets. The officers weren't wearing body cams, so there never was a viral video to bring attention to the case. Tamika Palmer, Taylor's mom, has been fighting for answers about what happened for almost three months now. She filed a lawsuit against the officers in April. I was ignored for so long, you know, to just nobody give you real answers. Nobody explain to you what's going on. Nobody to even apologize. Like, so I hope, I hope that it turns around. People are finally listening to what her name, listening to who she was, so. Who was she? Brianna was, she just was full of life and she would, anybody or everybody around her loved her. She loved to be around family. She was planning her to have her own family at one point, you know, and she was getting prepared to go back to nursing school. She literally did everything right, like she, had a plan for her life and she literally was living it and and doing just that and to have it taken away from her is is unreal what was the day like when you found out that whole weekend just really not knowing, not ever even seeing her, not knowing that it was actually her. You know, you're being told it's her. You're being, you know, I knew I couldn't reach her. I knew I didn't talk to her, but the, to not ever even see her, to not truly know in your heart that that's your, your child, your daughter. To finally be able to go in there and just see all these bullet holes all over into the neighboring apartments, into the upstairs apartment, to see where Brianna laid on the floor at and died. And yeah. No drugs were found at the apartment. The officers were placed on administrative reassignment, and there are now multiple ongoing investigations into the case, including one led by the FBI. So far, no charges had been filed against the officers. But Walker was immediately arrested and charged with attempted murder. He spent two weeks in jail and another two months on house arrest before the charges were dropped. When, once I found out where Kenny was, you know, it, I was nervous for him to know that. I still not know the whole story, but now Kenny's in jail and I'm not knowing 
exactly what for and what's happening with him. And, and he's the only person who I could get any real answers from to what happened to Brianna. And just to not even have access to him at the time and to think that now that they're trying to charge him with murder for thinking someone broke into the home and, and responding to that, like that's insane. And yeah. I'm standing here in mourning for Brianna. They made no announcement before they broke into Brianna's home and murdered her. They made Louisville no City Council is now considering a complete ban on no knocks. They're calling it Brianna's Law and voting on Thursday. The ban is something local politicians like State Representative Attica Scott have been advocating for for years without much traction. I'm disgusted that the police have continued their practice of failing to make any kind of announcements before they violently attack my neighbors. Do you feel like any progress has been made, not just over the past month, but over the past few years? Very little progress. Um, these actions have, have resulted in us being at a point where our local government is now talking about no-knock warrants. Now we need our governor and our legislature to talk about no knock warrants across the They're Kentucky. suspended at the moment, are they not? Suspended, that's it. The suspension is not a forever uh, abolishment of that policy of no knocks. If Kentucky were to ban no knock warrants, it would become just the third state in the country to do so. Florida and Oregon are the only others. No-knock raids, and raids in general, weren't commonly used in the United States before the 1980s. But as the war on drugs escalated, it became a popular tactic of law enforcement. Reed was killed by police who were serving a no-knock warrant. The police department falsified a no-knock affidavit. They got a no-knock search warrant. Dr. Peter Kraska, a criminologist at Eastern Kentucky University, estimates that police now perform somewhere around 60,000 raids each year and disproportionately target black communities. In Louisville, you have 23% of the population is African-American. At least 80% of these raids are done against African-American homes and private residences. So the perception among African-Americans in the Louisville community that we're the ones that are bearing the brunt of the drug war is 100% accurate. And how often are police in these raids taking down drug kingpins? It's extremely rare for the police to find the big bust. This is happening all over the country. A very small percentage of these are actually targeted at real drug dealers. About 40% of the time, they don't find anything. They've done this to the people in this private residence. They walk away and nothing occurs. No arrest, no prosecution. Why do individual police departments continue to do this thing that puts even their own officers' lives at danger? There's two big reasons. One is cultural and one is money. There's a segment of police officers that love the rush that comes along with being militarized. They love what they call real police work, which means you're using heavy weaponry to go after people. And the money involved, it is the number one tactic that generates civil asset forfeiture funds for the police themselves. Getting inside people's homes gives the police unprecedented access to their cash and to their property. And if you can confiscate enough of that, you can increase your police department budget in some instances, up to 40% of operating funds are generated through civil asset forfeiture. Between 2017 and 2019, the Louisville Metro Police Department seized $2.3 million in cash, according to its own records. The department reported pocketing almost $1.8 million of that money. Right now in Louisville, they're about to vote on legislation that would get rid of no-knocks in the city. There's also talk about doing it on the state level. Will getting rid of no-knocks solve this problem? The various efforts to get rid of no-knocks is really laudable and needs to happen. It's way overdue. The trick is, how do you rein in the 
more significant problem that they would carry out a normal search warrant, but they do it as a no knock. They go to the door, they knock, announce, police, and simultaneously use the breaching device to knock down the door. We call this a, a quick knock, and these are much more common than the no knock raid. So if no knock raids um, don't include quick knock raids, very little will happen. You will hear us, you will see us, you will know that black lives do matter. We will not stop right. until we have justice. That's right. Say her name. Breonna, Breonna lost her life March 13th. We love her and we miss her so much. Like this is, I just want y'all to understand like I've never experienced the pain. And let me tell you something, this ain't even my own child. So I can't imagine how she feeling right now. To see all these different people, all walks of life, all I could think is look at the world changing because I've never experienced a time in my life anyway. To have all these people come, to, to come together, to have the same agenda, to all want the same thing and, and, and be so heartfelt about it. That gave me hope. What does justice for Breonna Taylor mean to you? Having these three officers arrested and charged, um, fired even for that matter. The fact that they're still being paid is unreal to me. I don't think you should be an exception because you wear a badge. I mean, if anything, you should be more held accountable more because you took an oath to protect the people. You took an oath to protect and serve and you failed tremendously at that. Does justice for your daughter end with charging the officers, um, holding them accountable? The the system has to change. There has to be some sort of reform. There's that, like, so this should never happen again to anyone. No one should ever have to experience that. So no, I don't think it just ends there. I just think that it makes it right for her. No more. No more. Today, LMPD announced the officer who requested the no-knock search warrant for Taylor has also been placed on administrative reassignment. Meanwhile, protesters are still returning to the main square downtown every day. No-knock warrants are outdated and should not be used anymore. And, and, and I'm calling for you all to continue this fight mm -hmm. until we get what the hell we want. That's right. we, we deserve that. Breonna That's Taylor right. deserves that. Breonna What's it been like to hear people, not just here in Louisville, across the country, say your daughter's name? It's, uh, it's overwhelming. She's Breonna Taylor. She was 26 years old. She worked in an ER. She was a person. She had a name, and they needed to use it and say exactly what happened.